Here is a Pioneer CTS 550S with Dolby S. This cassette deck was in production from 1996 until 2000. Quite impressive. If we turn this on, the standby light goes off. But aside from that, the unit seems to be dead. But it isn't. As I shall demonstrate, it is working. The problem is, this cassette deck has an absolutely incredible amount of working hours on it, and that has taken a toll on the display. If I take off the color filter, you can see the display is working. Let me turn off the lights. It is working. It is just incredibly dim. This is one of the dimmest vacuum fluorescent displays I have ever seen. But the cassette deck does play. It sounds good. It's just running a bit too slow. Which I think may be another consequence of all those working hours. So I will check the capstan motor and flywheel bearings for any problems. Another issue is with the quality of recordings. They sound absolutely terrible. Simple reason, there is dirt on the record head. Only on the record head and it does not want to come off. I got some of it off, and that has already made a major improvement. But this is where I have to say I really don't like Pioneer Hi-Fi equipment of the late 90s. Back then, pretty much all manufacturers of Hi-Fi equipment were doing a lot of cost-cutting. But for some reason, Pioneer has done their cost-cutting in all the places where it's annoying and frustrating. So here is the problem. This door, this is one piece and this does not come off. This is on there. Uh, I think this bottom part might come off. So you can adjust the heads, but for cleaning the heads, this does not come out of the way. So you have to reach down in there and you just don't get a very good vantage point. And another problem is that uh, the plastic on this door, you can see this is no longer transparent. This is kind of translucent. You can see if there is a cassette inside or not, but you can't see what the cassette is doing. So not just the color filter has to come off, also this thing, I mean, look at that. Well, of course it's going to look nice on camera, but in real life this is terrible. So, yeah, this is what it should be. This is where you can, uh, where you can see what the cassette inside is doing. Here is the inside of the deck, and this looks good. This looks really good. So, where is the oh-so-annoying cost-cutting, you ask? Well... It's in the case. This is a very, very flimsy metal. And the annoying thing is they have not rounded the edges properly. Now, it's not like this is razor sharp, but trust me, if you are not careful, you are going to cut yourself. Again, we can see some signs of the hard life that this cassette deck has had. The circuit board around the voltage regulators is quite discolored and the shielding metal around both motors is rusty. That's pretty bad. Now, the mechanism is held in place by two screws up here, two screws that come up through the bottom. Now, one problem that I have already fixed because it was so annoying is down here. This is the endpoint detection switch for the motorized cassette door, and this was dirty. It was not making good contact, so the door would open and then immediately close again.
but some contact cleaner into this switch has fixed that problem instantly. Here is the mechanism taken out. In addition to what I said, I also had to unhook this spring up there, but that was it. So this mechanism actually is quite easy to take out. Well done, Pioneer. Well, maybe this was their recommended way. If you want to clean the heads, take out the entire mechanism because it's easy to do. Well, I can now certainly clean the heads really well and uh, can probably tell also the capstan badly needs to be cleaned. But we do also have cost cutting on here. Rather crazy cost cutting. Let me turn this around. Yeah, there is no back plate. There is no back bearing. There are mounting points, but uh, this flywheel and capstan are held in place just by this clip around the capstan in the front. So that is quite a crazy way of doing it. I don't think I've ever seen that before on a hi-fi cassette deck. But one advantage that this has is the belt is easy to replace. No tools required to get it out. Now, the belt is actually in really good condition. It uh, has good tension, but still, if I turn this flywheel, it does not move as freely as I think it should. Now, if I take out the belt, as I said, it's easy to do. To take out the capstan motor, you unsolder the connections and then you take out two screws on the front. One of them is down in there, the other one is down in there. I should mention this mechanism was made by Alps, so Pioneer had no part in some of the strange design choices in this mechanism. The motor, thankfully, appears to be just fine. It's turning nice and freely, and this rattling noise, unfortunately, is normal for these types of small motors. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some oil into the front bearing down under the pulley. Well, maybe I was just a bit wrong. I have put some oil into the front bearing of the motor. I forced the pulley up a little bit to gain access. You can see the oil down in there. And if I now rotate the motor, there is no more rattling noise. Now, the rattling noise is probably going to return sooner or later. As I said, it is quite typical for these motors. But I think it was a good idea to take the time and lubricate this. I removed the e-clip off camera. You have to be careful because these things like to go flying. Now there is another plastic washer under there. And now I should be able to pull out the flywheel because I think I would like to get some oil down into that bearing as well. Oh, this... Wow, this, this doesn't want to come out. Maybe we do have a bit of an issue in that bearing. There we go. Okay. Well, what... Uh, no, that's just a groove cut into there. Oh, it's just... It, it's the dirt on the capstan that uh, has kept it from coming out easily. But I can't see any oil, so uh, I'm going to add some. The mechanism has been put back together, the capstan has been cleaned, the bearing has been lubricated. Is that better than it was before? I think it is. Here is a close-up of the record and playback heads. They do show signs of wear, but I don't think they are worn out. I think these are still acceptable. 
I just spend a long time cleaning these, the record head in particular, and I had to go to quite extreme measures. I ended up using the cut-off paper stick of a cotton swab with toothpaste on there to polish the dirt that was on the record head off. That took quite some effort, but I think I got it to where it is pretty good now. The belt is still perfectly fine, so it has been cleaned and put back into place. And I also went through and cleaned all the micro switches up along here for the record protection and automatic tape selector switches in the front. Some of you may have already noticed the erase head somehow looks different. It looks like there was something missing. Well, I just turned the cassette deck upside down, something fell out, and now I know what is missing. This thing. Now, what this is, is basically a tape guide just like we have right here on the side of the record head. The same thing is supposed to be right there on the side of the erase head. There is a groove that this piece fits into, but the side pieces of the groove have snapped off. So this is not held in place anymore. And I have thought about this for quite a while and I think I finally found the best solution, and that is to use epoxy glue and glue this thing back on. Now, there is enough left of the original groove so that I can get the original alignment of this thing. The alternative solution, replacing the erase head, the problem is this right there. This is an adjustable erase head. I've never seen that before. I don't know how you would adjust that. The service manual does not make any mention of it. So if I was going to replace the head, and I do have plenty of replacement heads, if I was going to replace the head, I would have a problem with this adjustment. So epoxy glue to the rescue. And there it is. The guide is back in place. It all went really well. The guide is exactly where it should be. I put glue only onto the lower half, so there is no squeeze out on top. And once the glue has hardened, this should be fine. The epoxy glue has set, and that's the mechanism done. Here is the main board upside down for an inspection. Another annoying measure of cost cutting, the cable that's connecting the main board to the transformer does not unplug. It's a good thing I had a close look at the main board because I did find several bad solder joints in this area where you can clearly see how the heat of these three voltage regulators has discolored the board. Also in the vicinity of the voltage regulators I found four bad capacitors. These all had an ESR of 10 ohms and above. And you can see how I have tried to angle the replacements away from the heat sinks a little bit. The playback speed has been adjusted after lubricating the capstan motor and bearing, it was not as far off anymore as it was originally, but it was still too slow. Now it is pretty well spot on. Let's take a look at the wow and flutter. Pioneer rates this cassette deck for 0.14% wow and flutter measured according to DIN. That is that point right there. As you can see, the meter does peak above that value. But 
This cassette deck has had a long and hard life, as we have all seen by now. So I guess the slightly high wow and flutter is a consequence of that. And for comparison, here is the WFGUI software wow and flutter meter. And it's running slow again. I have to say, the overall speed stability of this cassette deck is not very good. And here it is. Cleaned and put back together, the Pioneer CTS-550S with Dolby S is ready to go again. So, to finish off this video, I'm going to make a test recording. Here is the test cassette. I'm going to use the BLEXD system to let the cassette deck optimize the recording parameters to this cassette. Now, I'm going to turn down the lights so that we can see what the display says. Here goes the BLEXD system. BLE stands for Bias Level and Equalization and XD must be an extension of the original system. And that's it. It says tune, but really it should say tuned, as in it's done. So let's turn the lights back on, start the music, and here we go. Thank you for watching. Thank you. This is tape. This is sauce. This is tape. And this is sauce.